So let's start with the Bank of Japan. What did you make out of this move? Well, obviously, it was a big surprise. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, telescoping that the move was coming. Um, I'd be a little bit more cautious in terms of predicting exactly where it goes, because Japan has some uh, very significant issues that are hard to address. Uh, they worry about long-term deflation, not inflation. They've had a hard time getting their economy to be as vibrant as they want it to be. Uh, and they have tolerated uh, a lot of debt, with most of it held domestically, so it hasn't had the kind of negative ramifications it might have if it were more broadly traded on international markets. I do think it's a move, um, but I think they have a long ways to go before the gap between uh, their interest rates and uh, normal interest rates in the United States, for example, uh, are anywhere close. So I think one can exaggerate uh, how much it will mean. Certainly on the margin, uh, it's going to move things, but um, I don't know that it's going to fundamentally reshape uh, how the world looks. Well, uh, perhaps the first move we saw was, of course, foreign exchange and yeah. what it did to the yen, which had been so weak, to strengthen it somewhat, because it had been so weak, particularly against the dollar. Well, going back to the days when you were Treasury Secretary, how would you have reacted to this sort of move? I guess you had a different regime back then. Well, I, I was looking at the opposite. We worried uh, that they might try to weaken the yen to gain uh, unfair advantage in terms of uh, exporting into our market. And we frequently had very, fairly difficult conversations about uh, what our response to that would be and how it would be a real challenge in the relationship. What's happened in the last year is that the rapid uh, decline in the, in the value of the yen has really created a lot of pressure internally within Japan, 30 percent plus devaluation against the dollar in the last recent period. And um, it's kind of beyond what they would have ever wanted. Now, I don't think that means they want the yen to get very strong. They still want to generally be able to have advantage in export markets. So they've got to find a balance. Fundamentally, I think they have to worry about the domestic condition of the Japanese economy and let the international issues kind of settle out. So let's turn to the international issues. Whether this has broad ramifications or not, we're seeing central bank tightening in much of the developed world, certainly led, perhaps, by the Federal Reserve. A lot of concern right now about a possible global recession. How do you see it? You know, when I look around the world, it's hard to answer the question with just one uh, simple generalization, because I think there, our economy is in a very different place in Europe and China. Um, and I think if you look at, at our economy, uh, I'm still in the slightly optimistic camp that uh, our exit from the, the uh, COVID policies, both financial and, and fiscal, can uh, lead to continued uh, growth, or if there is a, a slowdown and a recession, a very shallow one. Uh, I'm not one of the people who thinks we're about to go off the cliff, but partially that's rooted in a confidence that I have that the Fed is trying very carefully to measure what it does not to have that result. Um, you know, it could be that they end up having to go farther and the recession ends up coming the way some fear it will and be deeper. But to me, that's not the base case. So I think the United States will be softer, but, you know, emerge pretty strong. Europe, I think, starts out in a weaker place. They went into COVID in a weaker place. They have a war that's in Europe that's very much affecting uh, their economy and inflation. They're going to have to go harder on some of the, the results that that creates in terms of, of the value of you know the inflation and, and 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 what that means in terms of the interest rate policy um, you look to China yeah you know, we counted on China in the last big recession to help be an engine for the global recovery I think that's less likely this time they're going to have a hard time sustaining uh, you know a three to five percent growth rate they're not going to be growing at six to ten percent and they may get to a slower growth rate than that the very rapid change of policy on covid is going to lead to an awful lot lot of illness, I believe, in China. And I hope that they can control the number of people who die. But that has economic ramifications in terms of people showing up for work, as we know so well, when we had the waves of COVID here. So I think that China is both in a situation where economic policies have been constraining to growth, and now the health situation is going to be a, a, a slowing, not a, uh, an accelerating. Effect. Well, talk about that balance between economic policies on the one hand and the health on the other. What levers does China have? What buttons do they have to push, perhaps, on the economic front to really make up for some of the shortcoming well, on the health side? Well, interestingly, what they've been talking about 
recently, according to reports, is uh, stimulating consumer demand. Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell you how many times in bilateral meetings uh, I urge China to stimulate domestic consumption. Don't put all of your resources behind the, 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 the you know, industrial policies that are creating tech frictions between us. If they move in that direction, I think it will be helpful. Um, uh, I'm not sure that the policies will follow. They have a tried and true method of generating big projects and, and uh, investment uh, initiatives. Um, and they're actually pretty good at it, but they're running out of things to invest in in that regard. So I'm hoping that there will be some ref modest reform Form there in terms of balancing, and in a society where uh, the, the consumer spending is not driving the economy as much as it does in, say, our own economy, that would be a good thing. I think the health thing, um, it, it, you know, is going to be a big issue. I think it's going to slow things down. You know, I've heard conflicting views as to whether or not it becomes a global supply chain crisis. It doesn't have to become a global supply chain crisis to slow down China's economic activity. One last one, Jack, and that is we had we. Saw saw China grow more than any economy perhaps in the history of the world so quickly. Uh, but that was when the United States was either encouraging or benign. Now there's some rivalry there. How much of that is a friction cost in further growth for China or, for that matter, for the global economy? Look, I think there is friction cost in the, in the economic and geopolitical tension between the U.S. and China. I don't think it's going to go away quickly. And I hope after the meeting between our two presidents that it can be managed in a way that contains uh, the, the economic and geopolitical risk that comes from that competition. Um, I think that if we continue to put pressure on China's economy in a way that's clearly designed to deal with strategic issues, it's very different than if we're perceived as generally closing down mm -hmm. to China. And there's a thin line between the two. I think you know some of the policies that have been put in place, as I've learned more about them, are actually crafted pretty well to draw that line in a way that is, I think, think justifiable. But you can easily move it a little bit, and then the tension becomes much worse. And it's not just the administration. It's Congress forming a committee now on mm -hmm. China and what's going to come of that. I hope it stays in a place where it's managed. The two leaders meeting has set in motion a higher level of engagement. That's a good thing. We didn't have enough engagement before. Uh, it's very important to both of our countries and to the world that we manage uh, the issues we have uh, and find ways we can cooperate on things like climate.